Hey guys, hope everybody's doing well. Everybody's in good spirits. COVID-19, quarantine, over a month now. It's crazy. It's crazy how, uh, how life has changed and how, you know, everything is moving in a different direction. Hopefully everybody's in good spirits and optimistic about the future. I know it's tough right now, but um, we'll get through this. With that said, uh, today I'm gonna make a simple salad. Oh, excuse me, salmon, salmon on top of a fennel asparagus escabeche. Escabeche is gonna be a like almost like a pickle. Uh, it's marinated with with acidity, and the acidity breaks down the salad. Um, so i hope you enjoy i hope you like i hope everybody's doing well i hope everybody's having a great day i am <laughs> despite uh being quarantined that uh i really hope that uh you enjoy okay next is i wanted to talk about i'm gonna make a fennel salad so fennel is a unique vegetable i guess I have these long stalks, almost similar to like celery, but, and it has like a texture or consistency of like, or uh, it has a flavor profile of like licorice, it has a licorice type flavor. So what I do is, I cut off the tops, but I save them for later, cause you can make a stock and I'll probably use the leaves for some of the garnish. And then it's sort of like an onion, it has like these layers and stuff. So what I do is, is like I take my mandolin. Remember we talked about the mandolin? It's a very useful tool for me. And then what I do is, is like I slice it. And then you can see you have like these nice little like uh, shreds, but you can see they look really nice. And I'm gonna put them in my bowl. So I like the little rings. Um, again, be careful when you're using this tool. Also, you wanna take out like the little core. I do it like whole because I like the aesthetic of it. It's always about the aesthetic. You wanna make it look nice. I want to make it look pretty cute. Always want to make it look cute. And then I put that in there. And then what I do is a little, maybe a little bit of onion. Just a little bit. And I'm gonna slice it on the mandolin as well. But I'm not gonna cut it or anything because I'm gonna want those circles. That's enough. We don't want it to be too onion-y. Then you have like onion breath, and that's no bueno. But I'm gonna put that in there. You can blend in a little bit. And then I'm also gonna put Maybe a little bit of asparagus. And what I'm gonna do is, I'll probably cut it on an angle to give me those aesthetics. And I'm not gonna pre-cook any of this because the acidity for my little dressing we're gonna make, it's gonna have enough. It's gonna break it down. The acidity from the vinegar is gonna actually break down all this stuff to make it soft so it's important that you marinate it for at least an hour or two until all the vegetables start to like get al dente and cook and not discolor or anything like that so oh man the onions are making me cry see 
even after all those ex all those years of experience, I still suffer from onions. Sometimes rinsing it works. It helps. It helps with not being able to cry. Oh my god, I'm starting to tear up. Not because of COVID, but because of the onions. Oh my god. So right now I have about maybe a quarter cup, maybe a quarter cup of uh, vinegar. Also have the roasted garlic with with the oil that I cooked it in, and then let me get a sec. So I put like maybe two of the cloves in, as well as the oil to make our little dressing. I have a little bit of sugar to cut away some of that uh, acidity, so it, it wouldn't be so tart. about maybe a tablespoon maybe a little bit less two-thirds uh yeah no three-fourths of a tablespoon I have my whisk simple simple you want to crush up the roasted garlic too so it could be salt, maybe a little bit of pepper. And you could add honey to add to sweetener or agave. Agave is pretty good. So right now I have I have the little dressing. You know what? I'm also going to put a quarter of a jalapeno. Just to give it a little spice. And what I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna slice it. Or, yeah, slice. Look, I have these little strings. And then I put it in my salad. With the asparagus and everything. Always adjust to make sure you're clean. And then I have all my trash. And then what I like to do is just pour it. Just make sure you stir it and everything. You can use any type of vinegar if you want. It, it depends on your preference. You can even use acidity from like a lemon or a lime. If, Something like that, but I'm going to use white vinegar today. I like white vinegar. And then just dress it. Oh, yeah. And then toss it. And then I also have like a little bit about like herb mix. I have parsley. A little bit of dill. Dill works well with this as well. And uh, I'm going to add the parsley and the herbs at the end. Because I don't want those to this color. And I want it to be fresh. I want it to be light. I want it to be real light. It's, it's a summery salad, you know. So I got that marinating. You got marinated for about like half hour, 20 minutes until you can see that the, the, the fennel could, it could be a little bit soft. It's already softened up. I can feel it. So we'll leave that off to the side. And then we're going to come back to that. Okay. Then we're going to work on the salmon right now. All right. Right now we got our salmon. We got our pan heating up. And what we're gonna do is season. Season. I'm all about the seasoning because you want your food to taste good, right? And it's like I said, salt and pepper is all you need. So salmon is like a versatile fish. 
It's been in every menu that I've ever worked at in my life. It's always on the menu. People love it. You know, people are attending to eat a lot of fish, trying to stay away from meat. And uh, I love meat still. I love fish. I love vegetables. I love everything. So, right now, we're just waiting for our pan to get hot. And salmon usually has like this like little, I don't know, fish like oil. It's oil on top. Some people think it's like slimy, whatever. But sometimes if it's slimy and if you smell it and if it smells fishy, that means it's, it's getting old, it's getting bad. You know, fish is supposed to smell good. Um, you want to season both sides as well. You can leave the skin on. I chose to take it off. It's not going to kill you if you eat the skin. I like crispy skin, but... Today, I'm just going to do it like this. So you got to make sure your pan is hot. Remember what I say about the oil dancing in the pan. Dancing. It's getting all like... Uh... Always test it. I always have residual like salt and pepper in my hands so you know right now that's all it is so just waiting for my pan to get hot I have all my ingredients that I'm gonna finish it off with I'm gonna make two different versions today um, since these fillets are, th are thin they're a little thin I can finish this right in the pan I don't have to put it in the oven if they're a little bit thicker I would finish it in the oven and depending on how you like it on the inside, some people eat it like a little bit medium rare, medium, you know, it, it depends on the cooking process. This, I'm just going to like cook just so I can make sure I have like a nice crust on it. So here you go. Might be a little bit too much. You can like. And then, like, remember what I said, we're going to put it in the pan, right? We're going to put it in the pan. Can you hear that? So we're going to push it away. Remember how I said that in the chicken video? Away, so you don't get all that splatter. And then you can save your pan. You can, put, you can transfer it from the pan to the little baking sheet. And you're going to finish it in the oven. So right now, all you see me is just searing it. Let it cook. Let it cook. So what you want is a nice crispy skin. And I have my little spatula. This is like a unique spatula. This is a unique spatula. It's like a little bit rubbery. It has like this rubber or like Teflon, I guess. And it doesn't really scrape the pan. Try not to play with it too much. And you just let it cook. You sear it up. it up and what I want to do is like I want to sear it enough so like I have a nice crisp nice crust I'm sorry you know how we say looking good <laughs> looking good I hope everybody's well hope everybody's with good spirits let's always be careful when you're dealing with the pan you don't want to agitate it too much you notice that I'm always like careful. I'm just making sure that it's all cooked. This is how we do it. Up in quarantine 2020. 86 COVID. It's 
kind of uh, destroyed a lot of people's lives. I'm being optimistic. You know, my company is temporarily closed right now, but we're working on ways to open back up. Maybe do some new things. Offer some new offerings. I want to get a little bit nicer for us, you know? Oh. Looking good. Don't do that at home. I do it because I like playing with it. Always adjust the temperature. If it's too high, you don't want it to burn. The trick to cooking is always having a hot pan. I'm using a non-stick pan, but if you're using a regular pan, the trick is to have it hot. To have it really hot. Then you want to flip it again, flip it away. You can see I have a nice, like a nice crust on there. I'm gonna do one two different ways. I'm gonna show you one two different ways. This one, this one, I'm gonna put back in the pan in this little baking sheet. You know what? I'm gonna use the other one. Yeah. And then with this one, you can you can get like barbecue sauce. Barbecue sauce works well with this. So I don't know why I like it with barbecue sauce. And what I do is, I brush it on. And then I roast it in the, in the oven for like about maybe like four minutes. It doesn't have to be long, because you don't want to overcook it. If you overcook it, it's fine. So with this, I'm gonna leave it to the side. And then put a little bit more oil, lower the heat a little bit because you can see it's you know it's coming up, it's fuming. And then what I wanna do is I'm gonna make a simple sauce. I wanna make a sofrito sauce. I told you I, I use the sofrito for a lot of my bases, but this is a simple, easy sofrito dish or salmon dish, I'm not trying to be complicated. Um, and like I said, you can like uh, take care of, get, release some of that oil. Cause sometimes, like I said, the salmon has these natural juices, these natural oils that I don't want it to be too uh, greasy. So what I do is I have sliced garlic, sliced garlic, let's see. adjust that you don't want it to burn because it'll like impart some bitterness some of that brownness is fine then I'm gonna take about a tablespoon of yeah about a tablespoon of the sofrito And then deglaze with a little bit about maybe three quarters cups of white wine. Just be careful. And you just let it reduce. 
We got that little flambe action. That's how you know. Then I just let it reduce. Little season, a little salt and pepper. Make sure you cook out the alcohol. Then I mop it with the butter. I finish it with the butter. The reason I stir it so it doesn't break and it could be like a nice little consistency. And then I finish it with fresh herbs. It's gonna be a green sauce. And you can see, you can see, nice sauce. And then I'm gonna pour it over the salmon. Now we're back to the salmon. We're gonna finish it off real quick. But before that, we have our, our barbecue salmon. So we just have a plain pan seared salmon and then we have our barbecue crusted salmon. So right now what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna start plating. I'm gonna finish my little escaviche with herbs. I'm just gonna spread this out, make it look nice. Have the little asparagus spears looking good. You know what? I'm gonna add something else. I'm gonna add some cucumber. Add some cucumber. Just toss it around. You know, just toss it around. Maybe add some, little bit of grape tomatoes. I like little grape tomatoes. They're cute. And I'm, I'm just gonna slice it. I'm just gonna slice it a little bit so it can be like, you know, just plate it. It doesn't have to be fancy. It doesn't have to be fancy. And then, yeah, a little bit more. Oh, looking good. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use the barbecue salmon for this. For this one, just to give it some color. Just to give it some color. Oh, it's looking good, yo. And just put that right in the middle. Then you have that. Then you have your barbecue salmon over a fennel asparagus escaviche and some crispy yucca. Let's put the crispy yucca on there. Right, let's put it right there. And that's it. Let's add another one. Let's add another one. Let's put it over here. Put this here. Yeah. And then there you have it, people. You have a salmon over a fennel escaviche, cucumbers, some asparagus, some onions, herbs. Let me call it a day. 
We also have the sauce for the regular salmon. So that's what it is. You know what I mean? There you go, people. There you have it. Hey guys, uh, thank you for joining me to uh, watching this uh, salmon demo. I'm getting ready to eat. Uh, it's looking delicious. And I hope everybody's well. Uh, the longer this drags out, I'm, I know it must be driving people crazy. But we have to be resilient. We have to persevere through this. We have to be smart. We have to be healthy. And we have to support one another. That's very important. So with that said, you know, thank you again for joining me. Hope everybody's well. Hope everybody's healthy. And I, I greatly appreciate the support. Again, always, it, it really is uh, tremendous. And it does make a difference. Uh, one engagement, one person reaching out does uh, brighten my spirits. And I greatly appreciate it. And I hope you keep joining me, keep supporting me. And I'll do my best to stay positive, to keep putting out positive energy, messaging, and all that good stuff. So I wanna go eat because I'm hungry and it's lunchtime and I spent all morning making this video and it takes, you know, it builds up an appetite. So everybody have a great day, be safe. I hope everybody's in good spirits. And again, uh, thank you for, for everything and I'll see you soon. All right, bye, take care.